This is for fourth grade ELA, text set 13, uh, exploring identity. Raise your hand if you heard of a martial arts or watch someone perform martial, art, martial arts. What are the purpose of the, mar of the martial arts? This is Bruce Lee. His, his amazing martial arts skills made him a movie ideal. I don't while in his training, Bruce Lee found himself asking that same question, what are the purposes of the martial arts? The answer changed in his life. His life. Are you wondering what the answer was? Let's find out as I read Be Water, My Friend, The Early Years of Bruce Lee by Ken Moziku. Like flowing water, Bruce Lee could never be still. Neither could his father who was always on the move. An acclaimed performer with Hong Kong's Contiso Opera Company, he was a tour, on a tour of the United States with his wife when Bruce, Bruce was born in San Francisco in 1940. His father made Bruce an actor when he was still a baby. Bruce first appeared in a movie when he was just three months old. After the family returned to Hong Kong in 1941, Bruce began acting in more movies. Soon he was performing backflips and cartwheels. Bruce didn't think they were hard to do at all. <clears throat> Bruce grew up in a second-story apartment with his sisters and brothers, and aunts and uncle cousins and a few birds, dogs, and fish. He loved playing practical jokes like rearranging tables and chairs so others would stumble over them at night. He was always talking, always running around. Bruce's family nicknamed him Mo Sing Tong, which means never sit still in English. There was one thing that kept Bruce still for hours, books. He loved myths and legends, stories of warrior heroes, heroes for, who fought for the oppressed and who possessed abilities no others had. He read during the day and even in the dark. Bruce's eyesight got so bad he had to wear thick glasses by age six. So our Bruce Lee's childhood hobby is what you expected for someone who grew up to be a martial arts expert. What kinds of hobbies did you expect him to have? Him to have? Oh. Even though Bruce loved reading, school bored him. He couldn't stay still. He would rather go to opera rehearsals or film sets with his father or practice dancing with his mother. When everyone was away... His mother would clear some space in the apartment and teach Bruce ballroom dancing. He loved the smooth and uninterrupted flow as they moved across the floor. Sometimes, Bruce's family was invited to fancy parties. If his father was traveling, Bruce's mother had no one to dance with her. Bruce hated to seeing that. Madame, he would say, would you like to dance? Bruce often skipped school, performing, preferring to roam the streets of Hong Kong alone. With his father's rarely home, mother, Bruce's mother had to deal with his misbehavior. She scolded Bruce, asking how he expected to make a living in the future if he didn't get an education. Bruce, re Bruce replied that he didn't need to go to school. I'll become a famous film star one day. He said his mother scoffed. The life of a film star was not as easy and glamorous as he imagined, she told Bruce. He first needed to finish school like everyone else. Um, as Bruce grew older, school got tougher. At that time, Hong Kong was a colony of Great Britain, so classes at a school were taught in English. The classes at a school, uh, the books were in English too. Bruce didn't always understand what the teacher said, and the books might as well have been written in code. Bruce looked forward to joining his friends at the end of the day. They teased, heckled, and challenged some of their schoolmates, as far as well as school, students from other schools. They got into fights. Bruce and his friends found out that picking on kids bigger than themselves was a mistake. So Bruce and his friends pick fights with other kids. Raise your hand if it surprises you to learn that. What learn that? What do you think Bruce and his friends pick on other kids? What do you think on other kids? In Hong Kong, the martial arts were, a, were as popular as baseball was in the United States. Some of the Bruce's friends knew as a few of the moves. Some just copied others. Bruce decided he really wanted to learn martial arts from a master. The best martial arts master in Hong Kong was Yip Man. 
The master knew Bruce's father was a popular performer, and he knew of Bruce, too, as a young mo movie actor. But being from a well-known family did not guarantee study with the master. Yip Man wanted to know if Bruce was serious about learning martial arts. Allow me to learn like everyone else. Bruce told Yipman, and I will become your most dedicated student. At the master's school, Bruce didn't have to sit. He had to use his entire body, and he loved it. New students spent hours practicing the right stands, and Yipman wouldn't teach a new technique until students mastered the one they were learning. One of the most important exercises students were drilled in with sticking hands. The art of wrapping up an opponent's hands and arms. Sometimes Bruce trained for four to six hours a day. After months of intense concentration, sweat, and bruises, he didn't have to, do th to think about what he was doing. The moves became automatic. Bruce soon became one of Yip Min's top students outside of the master's school. Bruce kicked leaves off trees to build up his leg muscle. He pounded on a stool during tr dinner to strengthen his hands. Then one day after school, Bruce joined his friends and used what he had learned to fight others. When Bruce arrived for his lessons the next day, Yipman ignored him. The master helped other students, but not Bruce. Finally, Bruce asked what he was doing wrong. You have missed what you have been taught, what you are being taught, the master told Bruce sternly. You are really being taught the discipline of not having to fight. Then what are martial arts for? Bruce asked. Yipman continued to ignore him. This made Bruce mad, and he took it out on other students. The master saw everything. He asked Bruce to meet him alone. There are such things as harmony and yielding in martial arts, Yip Man explained. Big branches of a tree snap under the weight of a snow, while weaker and supply, supply reeds bend and survive. He told Bruce to relax, calm his mind, forget about himself, do not interfere with the natural flow. The master continued, There is even gentleness in martial arts. Gentleness, Bruce responded. How can I relax and be calm when exchanging blows and kicks? Yip Man told Bruce to think about what he had said and not to come to his lessons for a week. When Bruce arrived for his lesson the next day, Yip Man oh, I'm sorry. Bruce practiced by himself even more and thought deeply about what the master had told him. No answers came, so he gave up and went out in a boat alone. Gentleness, Bruce asked himself for the hundredth time. It didn't make sense because he did not understand. Did it mean that all the training was for nothing? Anger with himself, Bruce punched the water. Wait a minute. Bruce struck the water again. No matter how hard he hit the water, he couldn't shatter it. He tried to grab the water, but it ran right out of his hands. Water, the softest substance on earth, could never be hurt because it offered no resistance. But with enough force, it could break through anything in the world. Bruce let the boat drift, for it was useless to fight the water. So, what do you think Bruce discovered while punching the water, and how it was useless to fight the water? Gentle, gentleness, I think I understand, Bruce told Yipman when he returned to his lessons, but how is it applied? Let us begin, the master said. After almost four years, Bruce began to understand gentleness and yielding, and how to expand, expand the least amount of energy while using the opponent's energy against him. That less is more. Those concepts may have sounded easy, but Bruce found out that to apply them was not. A teacher at Bruce's high school, a former boxer who recognized Bruce's athletic abilities, encouraged him to compete in Hong Kong's Inner School Boxing Championship. Why not, Bruce thought confidently. How different can it be from martial arts? Bruce made it for the final match. Using the boxing skills he had taught himself from watching other students, but his last opponent was the three-time defending champion. Bruce soon discovered why. The champ pushed back Bruce around the ring, trying to, trying to be t as tough Bruce let loose with a flurry, flurry of punches. They all fell short. Bruce could only shield himself as he was forced backward. Then he found himself on the ropes. Bruce began to see the match as if he were a spectator, watching himself lose to a bigger and stronger opponent. Suddenly, Bruce's arms flew out, wrapping up his opponent's hands and arms. As the champ frantically tried to untangle himself, Bruce wrapped him up again. What just happened? 
Bruce asked himself, sticking hands? He doesn't know what that is, Bruce realized. Um, Bruce followed the natural flow, expanding as the opponent contracted, contracting, contracting as his opponent expanded. If he offered no resistance, the champ had nothing to hit. Bruce moved and closed and parried a jab. The rest was automatic. Contract, contact, quick, sticky hands again. That's it. Bruce scored a knockout and won the championship. Now that Bruce was the champion, he had many new friends. They asked Bruce to teach them what he had didn't done in the boxing ring. At the same time, there were students who wanted to fight him. Bruce wouldn't try back down from a challenge, and his temper got him in trouble. Bruce's mother had to go to the police station and sign a statement that she that said she was responsible for his future conduct. When his father returned home, his parents decided that Bruce should leave Hong Kong for a fresh start somewhere else. Bruce finally realized how badly he had let them down. His mother pressed a hundred dollars bill into his hand and folded his fingers around it. Bruce Lee's youth ended then. At age 18, he was alone on a ship sailing back to the United States. His parents had arranged for him to stay in San Francisco with friends of theirs. Bruce knew he still had a lot to learn. He shouldn't have been in those fights in the first place, missing that, misusing what Yip Man had taught him. He promised himself that in America he would conduct himself differently. All his martial arts skill training would count for something. Bruce watched the swirling water from the deck of the ship. He saw how water always found a way around an obstacle and continued on. Bruce calmed his mind and forgot about himself. He joined the gentle, natural flow. Be water, my friend. So what do you notice about the last words in the story? Having listened to the story, what does the title mean to you? What do you think happens to Bruce in America?